Well, a wonderful way to combine art and nature in Florence is to visit the Palazzo Pitti complex, which includes not only the palace, but the lovely Bardini and Boboli gardens. So you could combine all three places with the same ticket. So just to locate you, they're here in the Oltrarno area on the south side of the river, essentially. There's the Pitti Palace and the Boboli Gardens here. And just further up the hill are the Bardini Gardens. Well, in the Palazzo, you can wander through these splendid frescoed halls on the ground floor. These are the so-called summer apartments and there are a riot of baroque frescoes and trompe l'oeil effects and absolutely delightful and um, most of the time when they don't have an exhibition on they are empty you really can enjoy them uh, uh, on your own then uh, you head upstairs to the palatine collection and this is a really overwhelming series of picture galleries which display the Medici's remarkable collection of works from, uh, again, several centuries of collecting works that include masterpieces by Filippo Lippi, Caravaggio, Artemisia Gentileschi, uh, Andrea del Sarto, Veronese, Rubens. There's the largest collection of portraits by Raphael anywhere in the world here including the ravishing Madonna della Seggiola and the even more ravishing, if it's possible, Donna Velata. And there are also some outstanding portraits by Titian in the Palatine collections. This radiant portrait of a woman called La Bella, one of Titian's later portraits. And then there's the really mesmerizing portrait known as a young Englishman, which Titian did around uh, 1540 to 1545 or so. Let me zoom in on him. Uh, really, a most perfect example of portraiture, isn't it? Well, the joy of the Palazzo Pitti is that you can see all these masterworks without the massed crowds of the Uffizi Gallery. Um, and so if you're an art lover and, and if, if you want to see some of these great artists uh, up close, then you really can do so in the Pitti Palace. It is an overwhelming collection because of the sheer number of paintings. So I would recommend getting a guide. Uh, otherwise, it would be easy to get lost and, and miss the most important works and, and sort of wander off, <laughs> off, off uh, in the wrong direction. Behind the Palazzo, then, are the Boboli Gardens. These are the largest gardens in Florence, and they stretch up the hill to the Belvedere Fortress. And the tickets to the Boboli Gardens also include the nearby Bardini Gardens, which are lovely, and so you can combine both. As you can see in the photos, the, the Boboli uh, is a lovely mix of, of formal Renaissance Italian gardens, with more natural areas of woodland, park-like uh, areas. For the best views, and there are some lovely views from the top of the hill, um, head up here to the Giardino del Cavaliere, right at the top there. It's definitely worth a walk. I'll show you some photos from, from uh, there, there in a moment. Then uh, it's worth seeing the amazing Grotto, known as the Grotta Grande over here by Bernardo Buontalenti. That's actually on the way out of the gardens, so it could be the, what you see last. And then over to the other side here, there's the lovely lake and uh, little island known as the Isolotto. I think that's a particularly nice uh, part of the, uh, of the gardens. And you can walk up here, passing the, the lemon house and see all the citrus plants and so on, which is really quite pretty as well. Uh, you can see from this lunette, which was painted in 1599 by Giusto Utens, that the Bobbly Gardens were, were originally um, very geometric, uh, rigorously geometric. 
Um, and they're of interest today um, for, for historical reasons as well, because part of the original uh, gardens survive. And the sunken area here, just immediately behind the Piti Palace, um, is an open air amphitheatre, loosely based on Greek Roman amphitheatres that the Medici used for multimedia spectacles and entertainments and general Medici propaganda, as you can imagine. Uh, so it's quite an interesting space. And then um, essentially you, you walk up the hill from there and you get to the Giardino del Cavaliere, which I'll show you a photograph of. Um, but you can see here the uh, the bobbles are, are typical of the Italian style gardens, that they're a mix of box parterres, evergreen trees, cypresses, olives, home oaks, um, with with statuary, fountains, lakes, all making a lovely uh, interplay really between water and stone and greenery. This is the um, the grotto that I mentioned, 16th century grotto by Bernardo Bontalenti. Um, one can't go into it at the moment, but you can see it through uh, through the gates on the outside. Definitely worth peeking in on your way out of the gardens. And these are the views then as you climb up the gardens. And this is the lovely panoramic tennis terrace, the Giardino del Cavalieri. So the Bobbly Gardens are now under the direction of the Uffizi. Uh, the website details are there. That also gives details of ticket prices and opening times. Well, with the same ticket um, as the uh, Bobbly Gardens, it's also possible to visit the Bardini Gardens. These are lovely, actually. And they stretch up the hillside from the San Nicolò uh, area of Florence. Um, and as you can see, they feature these steep terraced uh, lawns, uh, steep flights of steps. So um, quite, uh, quite hard work, but really worth it because you do get some lovely, lovely views again over Florence. There are sort of windows onto the city, various little belvederes and nooks. And one of the lovely aspects of this garden is the wisteria-draped pergola, really ravishing at this time of year, actually, late, late April of May. And then ravishing views over the river to the north bank of the city and beyond. Now, at the top of the gardens, there's a panoramic terrace edged with statues. This, uh, this lovely site here, you look to Santa Croce and the synagogue there with the lovely splash of turquoise in its dome. And here there's a little cafe uh, under a lovely Renaissance lodger. And that's a delightful spot for a, a coffee or a glass of Prosecco or what, whatever you fancy um, with, with those views, as I say, looking over the city.